This is just to give you an idea about some of the things that are built into these protocols. So there's kind of the data and how the data is formatted, but there's also how these things talk to one another. Um, in a handshaking protocol, so a dial-up modem is a handshaking protocol. So the way that works is I go and I say, hey, Keith, can I talk to you? And I grab your hand, and then we start talking. And then when I'm done, I let go. So that, that's why it's called a handshaking protocol, because I'm reaching out and saying, do we have communications? And then I'm talking. So I say I want to talk. I get an acknowledgment. And then I actually perform my communications. And then I get an acknowledgment. Okay? There are not very many handshaking protocols left in radio telemetry. Back in the day when we were doing 300 baud, you know, radios, a handshake was important because I needed to make sure I had a key up and the radio on the other end was talking. Otherwise, it just took too long, right? So I put handshakes because I got a benefit because the, but at 9600 baud or 56 K bit, I don't want to do that because now that handshake, it's quicker just to try and fail, right? So... Most protocols these days are poll response. So I send a request from the master and I say, RTU 100, I need this register set. And RTU 100 answers back. And that's all there is to it. Right? So inside of these networks, the polling is round robin. What that means is I start with address number one, and then I go to address number two, and then I go to address number three, all the way through to the last address, and then I start back at address number one. So that's a round robin poll, okay? So what happens, and we've already talked about this, is when a device fails to communicate, I do my retries, I wait my timeouts, and then I just move on to the next, and the next time I go through the round robin, I'm gonna hit that guy again, and if he's still bad, I'm gonna get the same result. Okay, so round robin polling can be very fast if I don't have a lot of devices. If I have a lot of devices, it can be very slow. It can take 15, 20, 30 minutes to get all the way through a round robin poll, maybe more. I've seen systems collecting wellhead measurement data where one round robin poll takes four hours to get all the way around. Okay, all right, so. There's also timed polling. So timed polling, we do that to collect measurement data. So measurement data is accumulated in a flow computer every hour. So I don't need to hit it, but every hour. So I'll schedule a poll to get the data at the end of the hour. And that's as frequently as I hit it. And I use scheduled polling to do that. That would be managed by the host. There's also what's called report by exception. So Modbus is a simple poll response protocol. When I issue a poll, I read a register and I report back the value in the register I read, and that's all it does. DNP3 is a, is a report by exception protocol. So it actually builds up a cache of all the data that changed since the last time you polled with the, you know, provided it's outside of a dead band. And when I hit it, I get all those data values. And if there were no changes, I don't get any data values. So that's called a report by exception. So the value of that is I get a rich data set. Here's the thing. We are becoming more and more interested in rich data because we're starting to use SCADA data for analytics. Historically, we've just used SCADA data for operations and measurement, but now we're wanting to use it for analytics. And when I'm using it for analytics, I want rich data. I want data logs. I want something every, you know, 300 milliseconds. So that is a different requirement for communications than what we've historically seen. So these report by exception protocols are very valuable. So think about this. In electrical power, if I'm monitoring stuff inside of a switch station, when nothing's going on, I get no data back. But if I get a trip, 
I want to, in you know, millisecond time frame, I want all the data that changed when that trip occurred so I can analyze what occurred. So these report by exception protocols are proliferating in electric power utilities for that reason. The other idea is cry out. So um, the Fisher Rock has this, um, many other devices have it. So in these poll response protocols, the host is the only guy that can talk, right? And the way he does that, he issues a poll and says, 100, I need these addresses. What cry out does is it allows the remote device to say, hey, Mr. Host, I have something you need to know about, right? And then the host will put that guy to the top of the queue and pull him next. And again, this has to be handled both in the field device, because the field device has got to support it, and in the host. So I got to have it supported in both sides of that communication. So cryout's real handy for things like, I've got a critical upset and you need to know about it. Like I'm overpressuring the inlet of a gas plant, or I've got high fluids in the inlet of a gas plant, that kind of thing. All right. The problem with cryout is it works well in a quiet network, but if I've got a network that's real busy and I put cryout in it, cryout can slow the whole network down, particularly if I have something that cries out all throughout my network. So, you know, there's some, just like everything else that we're talking about, there's some thought that has to go into how do you implement these things. All right, so one of the big things that was really big. Oh, 20, 15, 20 years ago when I was kind of getting started in the SCADA stuff um, was the idea of single host multiple protocols, right? So Modbus, BSAP, Rocklink, all of these protocols, when you open them up, they all look like bytes, right? But the way they order the bytes and what's in those bytes is different depending on the protocol. So they're, they're, they're interpreted differently. So one of the big things in the late 90s, early 2000s was the idea of a multi-protocol host. These are prolific now. There's a, you know, Kepware does this, Autosol does this, ICE does this, and others. But at the time, what people were doing is if I had rock devices and I had Bristol BSAP devices and I had Total Flow devices, I'd have three different master radios and separate dedicated comm channels because I couldn't mix the comm channels. So by getting to these more advanced polling hosts, that problem kind of went away. 